Hi, I'm Richard Platt. I'm a teacher here at Southeast High School in Bradenton, Florida. I teach engineering. And one of the key components in my class is learning how to do drafting and how to do design using standard tools that we have used for thousands and thousands of years. In the textbook that we use, Exploring Drafting by John Walker, I'm going to open up a page of a isometric and orthographic projection problem we're going to solve. This is the problem we're going to solve in the book. It's this one simple part with this orange face on it. And what we have to do is we have to draw the top, the missing front view, and also the right view. Uh, we're going to change how this drafting is done for this particular design to make it more legible and easier to read. In my career at Johnson Space Center, working as a CAD and board designer at Johnson Space Center for the Space Shuttle Program, we had to make our drawings somewhat different than this so they could be easily read, easily, easily read, and also easily produced, uh, depending on what type of machine we're using to produce them. So with this problem in mind, this is basically what we're going to shoot for in this video as you're seeing right now. We're going to shoot for a drawing that looks very similar to this. And what I'm going to do is show the manual drafting methods on how to create this particular drawing right here, this one orthographic projection of this part. And again, we're going to use standard tools like a ruler, uh, a 30-60-90 triangle, a T-square, a regular inexpensive 7-millimeter pen that you can buy at a convenience store or Walmart or someplace like that, a, a, a eraser shield, and a regular white non-marking eraser. So to get started, we'll move some of this stuff out of the way and we'll get started on this. So I'm going to go ahead and move all this aside. I'll use this drawing as a reference for myself. I'll take a standard sheet of copy paper. I'll lay it down on my board. I'm right hand. Uh, I'm right handed, and so I'm right hand dominant. So I'll position my artwork more to the left uh, on this draft, little small drafting board I've got here. So I'll take my 30, 60, uh, excuse me, my uh, T square, and I'll affix it to the side of the actual drawing board I have. And I can take my my copy paper and I can slide it underneath the uh, T-square, and you'll notice that on this T-square, there's a, there's a ledge underneath it, a little ridge, where the piece of paper can stop. And so that way it becomes perfectly perpendicular and parallel on this particular board. Now with that done, I'm going to go ahead and pull myself off uh, a fair amount of tape, about this much, about a little inch and a half. And remember, with tape in a drawing, uh, less is more. So what I'm going to do is tear off little pieces of tape and try to get up to about six pieces. I'll go ahead and lay them to the side here, and I'll get these as I need them. So let me tear these apart. I kind of like using um, painter's tape, the blue tape, because it's really easy on the paper, and it peels up really, really well. Now, if you have the money and have a drafting supply house you know, in your community, you can go and get what's known as drafting dots. It's basically masking tape that's cut in the shape of a dot that you can peel off and use on your drawings. It works really, really well. So I'll take this holding my hand on the T-square the and my fingers on the paper, keeping it uh, perpendicular and parallel. I'll go ahead and put the tape down. I'll start at one corner and move myself around. I'll put this in the center so that way when we move our tools around, it'll be able to rise and, uh, and not the paper won't rise up and get torn off. So pull that aside, tape this here, and tape this here. Okay? Now, one of the things that's important now is to go ahead and put ourselves a simple border sheet around uh, this particular paper we're going to use. So I'll take this standard uh, ruler here, and I'll come up and I'll find a quarter of an inch. I'm going to move to the first one inch mark so I can see my six sixteenth inch uh, indicators earlier, uh, easier. If you notice on this part of the ruler, everything's divided up into thirty seconds of an inch. On this side, it goes to sixteenths of an inch. So I want to come off one quarter, and what I'll do is I'll come off one quarter of an inch right here and make a mark. And then I'll come on the opposite side and do the same thing again, one quarter of an inch, and make another mark. I do that all the way around uh, the paper. I'll make these marks, as you see here, and I'll put those marks in one quarter. I'll come down here to the bottom. I'll come up one quarter there and make a mark. And then also I'll come up on the system on the bottom. I'll come up three quarters of an inch, which should be about right here, and make a mark. So I've got all these marks around. Now this is where my T-square really comes into play. I'm going to move my tape out of the way. I'll come up here with my T-square, 
and I'll line it up with that first mark that I made at the top of the page. And I'll draw myself a line going across. Okay? And then I'll lift up my T-square, come down to the first mark, which looks like it would be the top of my title block, and I'll make a light line about halfway over to the edge of the paper. And I'll move down a little bit further, and I'll make myself a line here um, on the bottom, kind of heavy, coming across like this. And so as you can see, I've started to, to formulate what's going to be my, my uh, border sheet going around my drawing. Okay, now with that done, I'll go ahead and take my 30-60-90 and lay it uh, parallel to the, uh, the bottom edge of this to parallel to the bottom of the T-square, and I'll draw my left vertical line of my border sheet coming up here like so. Don't worry about your lines not perfectly matching up at first. This is like, you know, riding a bicycle or hitting a curveball in baseball. It takes practice. But the more you do, the better you get. So we'll go ahead and make those lines. Now, with that done, I'm going to stop for a second, go back to my ruler, and I'm going to measure half of 8.5 by 11. So if I take half of 11, that should be 5.5. I'll make myself a mark right there at 5.5. Half of 8.5 is going to be 4 and a quarter. So I'll make myself a mark there as well. Now again, I'm going to draw lightly on these lines here because I will come back and erase these lines later. Okay? These are basically dividing my drawing into a quadrant, four quadrants here. And so what I'm going to do here is come down here and I'll put this line in as you see. Pull down just a little further, holding my T-square uh, flush to the uh, left edge and my 3069. I'm going to come up off the bottom, make a heavy line at first because that's the left side of my title block. Then I'll come over here and make that thin line up in the middle. Now, this is giving me my four basic views of my orthographic and isometric projection. It's giving me my top view here in the upper left. It's giving me my front view in the lower left and my right view in the lower right. The area up in this area is, is allocated for my isometric. So now what I'm going to do is start laying out how my drawing will be centered on my page. So I'll come over here and I'll go to the one inch mark on my ruler. I'll make a mark at the two and I'll make a mark at zero on the two vertical lines. Then I'll come back and do the same thing on the horizontal where I'll make a mark here and I'll come down here and make a mark there. Now with those four little marks in, I'll come by and I'll make the quadrant uh, bottom parts of my part. So these lines here will be the bottom draft lines of my part. I'll come over to the upper right quadrant and I'll make just a light line at about the one inch mark off center. Then I'll come down here and do the same thing again, except this time I'll go all the way across from left to right. And now I'll put my vertical lines in. Is it showing up pretty good? Yeah, the light lines are tricky, but you can still see them. Good deal. Okay. I have my helper here, Conrad, that's working with me on this video. And now what I'm going to do is come up here and I'll make a line as you see right here, off the one inch mark to the left, and I'll make a line, you know, from about here up to this one little spot right there. Now, let's look at what we've done. What we've done is, is we've drawn the bottom edge and the side edge, the right side edge of the top view part. We've done the same thing except the opposite. We've done the top of the front view and the right of the front view. And on the right side quadrant here, we've done the right view quadrant, we've done the left side of the part and the top of the part. This part right here, this one spot right here, this cross, becomes the anchor point for the isometric. We'll come back to that. Now, in referencing my drawing, one of the things I need to do is let's go ahead and finish up the title block here, and we need to do some, uh, some text work here. So I'll come across the top here at three quarters inch above the base of the uh, drawing, and I'll draw in that title block. Now what I'm going to do is take my scale or my ruler and I'm going to come an eighth of an inch off the bottom of the title block and I'm going to make myself a light trace line across there. And that will be the basis for my signature or my, or my name and information uh, about this drawing so the person building this part or reading this drawing will understand. I write at a slant and I use this bottom trace line as my line to put my name on. So I put down Richard Platt, 